Okay, minutes from October 24th. Yeah. Yeah, there's it. a bit of a kerfuffle because what I sent out in the email right. is correct from a certain point down, but I was initially trying to write this up in Google Docs and um, I, I couldn't get the trusty accounts to like copy over nicely. So then I started working out of open office. So um, I, I fixed the top. The municipal budget status is 1023, 23, I'm, I think I can get the, let's see. I wasn't I, sure when I read it, why? Yeah, it, it's a kerfuffle. I think bad. everything is right from the director's report down. I know it okay. is. Okay. All right, the, do you want well, to? Well, no, October, September, October. Do you want to, um, well, I can either run upstairs and try to resend to give you an updated financial report. Or, or can we... I can just send an update after the meeting that has the more up-to-date one, because I think this is the old one from last month. Right. I, that's what Not my yet. confusion oh. was. Um, if we're... Uh, if Here, look, look, look at circ numbers and give me, like, 60 seconds. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. I'm going to start counting now. I haven't read all the messages from today. I don't know if everybody else has. Um, Ellie, I'm not sure. I'm a little confused about uh, on the CERC uh, numbers. I know you had asked about separating out digital loans. Uh, because he, audio is separate, right? Audio is like CDs. Yeah, right. And he, uh, Justin did send, I maybe he only sent it to me, uh, but it was very interesting about the digital loans because it did, he did split it down over the, over the last several years. Mm. And, uh, what was audio and what was um, uh, readable. And did any of you see that? Um, I don't no. remember seeing it. Okay, well, it was, um, and Justin can uh, probably, I, I wrote notes on what he had sent and it was very interesting and 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 um, just dropped it off because it was on the weekend that I dropped it off on his desk. And um, so I don't know, uh, but I did notice on when he was, talking about his budget for next year, he seemed to sort of concur with what my thoughts were that there's a lot of um, audios, it seems is more, more using than the readable ones. The eBooks, the e-audios are more being used than the seems to be escalating higher. So I don't know if, if that's, but that would be in sort of a different um, uh, conversation, I guess. Right. So yeah. Do you, yeah. does everybody want to see that? Cause I, that just, no, no, that. no, not right now, Ellie. It, um, no, I don't have it with me. I, I just. Yes. I would like to see it. If you can send it out at some point, that would be great. Well, it would be Justin sending it out. Cause he, he yes. sent it out to me that, then he could say yeah, that would be good. All right, let's go back. I'm back. Um, okay, are you finance good? report is a wash because I apparently saved over everything I did with oh. October's data. Um, oh shit! So I'll, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll write that up again tomorrow and send it out. There's, All right, there's don't no worry about it, buddy. Just a don't summary worry. count, but um, okay, that stinks. I apologize. Not to worry. Hey, we all do it. Not a problem. We were talking under uh, um, the circulation numbers and um, just the question about separating out the digital loans by audio books and regular ebooks. If yep, I do it in um, the ARIS reports, which I think I sent out 
to me, it just me. I, I believe you, know. you sent it to Ellie. I don't know if the rest of us got it. I don't. Maybe we did. It was know. right after the last meeting, I think. Maybe I got it and I just. Or or maybe towards the end of. maybe. It was... No, I don't think I responded. I think the response to everybody. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So that would be something else that we'd be um, interested in getting. Is that breakdown? Yeah, I can look for that. Um, let me write a note. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how things have shifted over the years because I don't go for purchasing parity um, in ebooks and e audio because I don't buy physical audio. So I spend more money in audio in Libby than I do okay. on books because it, right. it kind of balances out because the readers, the, the print readers um, have access to books. You know, people who listen don't have access to anything at the library, really. So I'm happy to pump more into overdrive for those patrons than for um, print readers, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, certainly. That was my only thing. I think everything... I'll find that email and send it. Not to worry. Everything looks good uh, as far as I can see. We're going in the right direction for sure. Yeah, circulation is good. Um, the door counts. Um, the new door counter is pretty awesome. Um, it syncs to my phone, so I can do that and then compile the data in a, a Google Doc. But the uh, 1493 in August, 1227 in September, and 2463 in October, wow. thanks to Oktoberfest. Um, <laughs> this month has been really busy um, operationally, and it, it's kind of been a chaotic whirlwind because we're overhauling operations um, in preparation for kind of hiring what we expect to be a parallel evening staff to be working. Um, we won't be having as much contact with these people, and it's going to be spreading hours out. I'm not going to be here all the hours open, so we need to have better communications methods, scheduling methods. Um, so we've migrated all the staff into Google Workspaces. Um, so now every staff can log into a computer with a CWMRS me ADD email address and access all of their files, um, their survey results, their reports, whatever they're working on. Um, and it also syncs to um, an individualized Evergreen password that logs into the ILS. And then they can, you know, like Deb can have her columns configured so that it automatically searches for children's stuff. Gail can mm -hmm. have hers configured for how she catalogs instead of everyone using the same one. It was also a massive security risk, which is not something we can afford um, in this day and age. Um, mm -hmm. So this is cleaning up how we do things, making sure people can't log into each other's stuff. Um, we'll be able to track workflows, see, you know, who's making what mistakes. Um, and it's just proving like a really good tool for delegating, tracking, collecting information. Um, I, I sent an email about it. Like I can't even describe how many things this is like, you know, led to downstream effects, like creating mm -hmm. an official, um, you know, a resupply list. Because right now, you know, if we run out of something, a staff person just puts the exactly, last or whatever right. it was on my desk so I can order another one. But, you exactly. know, system. Right. So yep. we need to know where they are. Um, and, you know, everyone needs to have, you know, like their own project management spaces. Um, and other news, we signed up 40 kindergartners for cards thanks to the field trips. And yes, we've got quite a few program attendees. Um, next year, we want to get the applications out in advance. This year, we had a week's notice, so there wasn't enough time to process them before the visit. Um, but that was a big success. Great. Um, That's awesome. On this Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m., there are going to be two rug hookers here. Um, they live locally. They're part of a guild in um, Connecticut, and they want to start um, a group that meets at the library on Thursday nights to kind of do what Betsy's group used to do. Um, their specialties is, is rug hooking, but they want to accumulate more fiber art people to kind of populate the table um, so that either weekly, biweekly, or once a month on Thursday nights, we can have, um, you know, you come to the library and hook. 
or knit uh, or whatever. I was excited um, to see this one, Justin. I can't do Thursdays for like a why a few weeks, but um, I wanted to reach out to them, and I didn't see a way to get to them directly to say I love it. I just can't do it immediately. Well, mm-hmm. if you want to forward me anything, you want to send to them, I'll yeah. pass it along. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> What's what are their names? Just so we're not, or just say the fiber art group. Uh, fiber art group. Um, that's it, fine. I can tell you their names in two seconds. I'm on Deb's computer, but it doesn't matter because my bookmarks follow me. <laughs> that's <laughs> so cool. It's our name. I have a friend, Heather Parker and Jennifer Ashworth. Re- I recently yeah. reconnected with her, and she is hugely into rug hooking. Where did I leave the agenda? There it is. Where does she live, Danielle? Local she or? lives in Webster. Okay, good. On December 9th, not November 9th, which is, you know, what the newsletter said. That passed two copy edits. <laughs> On December 9th, from 4 to 7, we will be having a holiday open house um, during the Douglas Winter Stroll. Um, so we're going to have some crafts, some snowflakes, Christmas ornaments and things. Um, going to have hot cocoa and cider out. We'll play some Christmas music over our computers. And on the hour, I'm going to do readings of night before Christmas or if there's just enough people waiting. Um, awesome. Other businesses are going to be doing things up and down the street. I know there's going to be vendors at BZ Nutrition and a Santa there. Um, and <laughs> we're going to have lights on the outside. A uh, mm-hmm. local company is going to put lights on front of the library and do some other buildings downtown, all the ones that agreed to it. Um, they're calling it a competition. It's not really a competition. Because <laughs> everyone's getting their lights done by the same person. Uh, it's volunteers. But um, it, it, uh, in, hopefully downtown Douglas will look pretty cool. And on December 9th from 4 to 7, we'll just have a shindig at the library if you want to drop by. Me and Gail will I be would here. love yeah. to be yeah. there, um, but... We have one of our, um, we have different family in the area. So December 9th has turned out to be the date for part of the family to get together. So we'll be here. Um, I'm not sure if we'll make it downtown. We might, but I can't commit to being at the library. I'd love to. Um, Hopefully at least a couple other uh, trust I, show yeah, I'm going to be out of town on vacation. Unfortunately, I would love it too. Yeah, it's busy season. I expect it to be a pretty low key event of people wandering in and out. Probably mostly kids, you know, coming in for the crafts mm-hmm. and the stories. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm yeah, excited about it. Though, that would be good. That sounds cool. Stuff Very nice. Uh, we do have some lights out over the circulation desk. I've contacted Jeff Grenier to fix those. He's also going to upgrade the floodlights out front because right now they're not putting out enough light. That should all be um, operationally um, absorbable. So, like, we don't need grant money or anything to do that. Um, and the same with the shelves that fell down in the basement. Um, they have been reaffixed to the wall. Brian LaValley did that and in, also installed some of the shelves in the archive. Um, that was a total bill of nine ninety seven eighty five, but it wasn't really a um, optional one because the shelves <laughs> fell down and had to be put back up. So it'll be coming yeah, out of our repairs and maintenance budget. And it's um, a good idea to secure shelves to the walls. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to be very loath to do it myself in the future because if that had happened whenever you know patrons were here, we we, we would have been in a bad spot. It's yeah, that's something that you want to keep in your head. But if those shelves fall down again, they will be taking the building with them. Um, because they'll have to go <laughs> through the wall, there's an empty space on the other side into the masonry, and it's that it, now they're secure. Professionally installed shelves make me breathe easier. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. And that's the end of my director's report. All right, thank you, Justin. Thank you. Does anyone have questions or comments? No? Okay, so we can move on to um, the building project. I'm trying to see this. My screen is not. Let me see. Can you make that bigger, Justin? There. There you go. My old eyes. Let me take off my glasses. There we go. 
So um, <clears throat> under next steps, first we have the, the Brainy Building Program. We've all gotten that report. Um, we voted to not pursue the grant at this point. So I'm not sure if there's any more comment on this uh this program the building program my suggestion is that we um obviously we're going to uh refer to this many many times and uh uh keep it uh whether we need to keep it on the agenda i'm not sure um i think we're ready to just move on from that at this point to bring it back as needed. Mm -hmm. Are we good with that? Do you mean um, reviewing what? No, I just mean that we can take it off the agenda for now. We yeah. already voted at the uh, the special meeting in October that we weren't going right. to pursue the the um, the state grant at this point. So the Brainy Building Program is the document we have, but I think we can table that for now and move take take that off the agenda. Agreed. Agreed. I got it now. Okay. Yes. Do we need to vote to take that off or can we just take it off? Take it off. Okay. All right. We'll take that off. All right. So moving on to the Chesbro option, uh, Ellie sent out yes. her... Uh, description of a project that she could see as uh as doable yes can i um interject here or in a minute i just had um i did a little bit of research related to very little <laughs> related to what ellie sent over and one of the to me the key questions is the parking in the back if there's possibilities to extend that. So I just wanted to put that in here before we got too far. So I did talk to Ginger Petraglia, who most of you may know owned the building to the right. Well, when you're looking at it to the left of um, Uni um, Webster first, and they had owned the parking lot, that building had owned the parking lot in the back, but apparently there's a lot of overlays with that parking, like, mm. um, the Hunt House owns a portion, the apartments way in the back own a portion, the bank owns a portion, and the um, uh, funeral home owns a portion. So there's a lot of, um, I'm forgetting the word, but there's a, a lot of um, easements. Easements. right of way. So th that's good news, I think, for us. So I think what it comes down to is there are possibilities to have another easement for parking if we should need it, because from my point of view, there's always plenty of parking, um, like between the apartments in the back and where the bank is. So that's my little piece. Okay. Yep, we can build parking um, in theory all the way back to the property line, which is almost the sidewalk on Josie's house. It's wetlands conservation, but I mean, you just have to go through the committee and get everything approved and then follow the rules. Okay. Um, it was well, tell me where that is the again, Justin. was doing that. But it mm -hmm. also, um, the problem was the road coming in between the pizza shop and the library because it's not wide enough for two way traffic officially. So, to make like an official good, you know, like compliant parking lot, you have to have that be a one way and you have to have an exit somewhere else. So whenever we were tr back in 2015, the hope was to get an easement for the library on that parking lot um, so that we would have the option to, um, you know, have an ingress or, you know, people could come in next to the pizza shop, leave by going into the bank parking lot and exiting on mechanic. Um, but at the time, um, the property owners, uh, the Petraglias, I mean, they didn't want another easement on that lot without some kind of compensation because um, mm -hmm. it does devalue the property. And that's when the talks kind of stalled and yeah. that entire project kind of stalled. So it became a moot point. Okay. So now they don't own it anymore. So that's in our favor. Um, so Justin, um, I didn't quite get what you were saying though. Like we can go as far back as where, like, where does the property end? Um, 
if you look out it, it, when you're like in the library parking lot, looking mm -hmm. back at, you know, our neighbors, okay. um, our parking lot goes almost all the way back to the sidewalk. To the sidewalk. Those, what sidewalk? Like, the, the white building behind us that is apartment units. Right. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Directly back. There's a little sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I our know. property line ends like five feet, six feet next to that building. Like, oh, okay, good. You go way back. Because and there was something with, uh, because it's in, in um, the water that goes off of there goes into the Mumford River. Is that mm -hmm. a problem somehow? That could be an it's issue. Protected wetlands for the for the Mumford River, um, but the um, there's there, there's you can still build a parking lot there. You just have to have conservation commission approval and follow their rules. So like permeability layers, all that you know engineering stuff. But you could um, have still your handicap stuff right by the back door, like two spots for handicaps. And have the rest non uh, tarred or whatever, not paved over. You know, it would be like it is now. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know what would have to go into making it an official handicap one. I know that um, Van Hoor has had drawn up something kind of like that whenever we were trying to make the project fit within the grant uh, within the confines of the Massachusetts Office on Disabilities grant. So that is doable, but that was before we actually did our parking lot, so it would need retooling and stuff. Um, did everyone see the email I got, um, or that I sent after I got the figures from um, Andrea Bono Bunker today? Not fully. I not fully. It. it was really late. Um, because she just got back from vacation, but you know, like it, it, it gives us the information we need to kind of price it out. Where did it go? No, I don't think I saw that. Well, there was one hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars per square foot. There was no subject, guys. If you're looking for it, yeah. So today, uh, I sent an email to Andrea Bono Bunker, who is the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners Library Building consultant and specialist so like she runs the grant programs she's the expert in the state on what these things cost mm -hmm. um, and so she said that last fiscal year all you know new public library construction re renovation averaged between 750 and a thousand dollars per square foot um, and then add 30 to 40 percent of that for soft cost and then factor in five percent per year um, increase for uh, inflation if you're trying to project into the future. So just as a thought exercise, you know, Mary Brainy's building program was um, 13,000 some odd square feet. So if you plug in the math, you know, on the low end, that's a $13,000 facility. And on the high end, it's a $19,000 facility. 19 um, million. Million, million, million. Let's take um, that out of uh, grant funds. <laughs> yeah. With the NBLC paying 45%, that would make the building program library, you know, eight, $8,817,000 and 168 if we assume, you know, that's the low end of the spectrum because we're Douglas, we're not Boston, it should be relatively cheap to build here. Um. Well, then if we project that out to 2029, no, let's not even go there. Interest, <laughs> no. You need to fundraise $13 million um, before 2033 if we want to survive survive. <laughs> without raising taxes. Right. Um, $14 million by 2033. <laughs> let's break it down into <laughs> small bites. <laughs> but then I did the math for adding an elevator on the back, extending it by 10 feet, doing all three floors. And so I write that out here, and that's 8336 which is only $500,000 cheaper. And again, you would have to increase 5% per year to add for inflation. Um, so then just, you know, forgetting the third floor entirely. Say we just want to renovate the first floor and the basement, make them ADA accessible, um, and then add you know, a 10 foot addition onto the back with the elevator and squaring it off. I mean, it's a $5,557,000 project according yeah. to the estimates. So, right. I mean, we just have to revise 
our numbers of what we're expecting this to cost upward. Mm, okay. Uh, I don't think there's a way around that. That's really, that's really helpful information. I think, you know, cause we've all been complaining that we're like throwing our, a number yeah. at the wall just as a guess. That's only yeah. if we use her building plan. If we don't use Mary's thing and we do our own, it's not going to be that much. No, no, I'm saying the chest row option as written out, if you price out according to these options, is an $8 million, $336,000 plan. I don't know how it can be possible because the old plan was only $2 million. It was originally one and then it went to two. The, I don't know how it could have gone up $6 million. Because that was, that was, it was only $2 million going out to... 16,000 square feet. That was in 2015. That was that years ago, way, way back when. That was like I don't think it will be 8 million, really. Well, I mean, that's not, I, I'm not giving these numbers. I'm passing these numbers along from mm -hmm. the highest authority in the state. So, you know, you can do what you want with them. That's That's really helpful to have that. Yes, I know so Don, Don and I opening. tried to uh, to um, to twist arms to get a number out of people in town, and they would never give us anything. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We tried just, with Bill. We tried. Yeah, <laughs> she's an authority. She's not just you know, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually super helpful to have that. It's sobering, but. Sobering. I was really hoping, you know, like I sat down doing this math this morning, you know, thinking, all right, we're going to find out that this, there, there's a middle road here that's like a right. right. million dollar project. And uh, it, 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 this number was, was a lot higher than I wanted it to be. Yeah. But nothing I can do about that. Um, so I don't know how that affects the conversation y'all wants to have. I mean, there's, well, let me, I was going to suggest, um, I was going to ask, uh, where does the board want to go with this right here? Again, um, we're obviously not looking to vote on anything for sure, but I want to uh, uh, ex uh, extend my appreciation to Ellie for making this proposal mm -hmm. to at least give us something to look at and work on, but um, where does the board want to go with this right now? Um, I think it would be worthy of a discussion, like what if we are in complete agreement with Ellie, Ellie's proposal, or if we like it, except for, you know, certain things, have a, you know, have a little discussion to see if we're on the same page. Just from, from my perspective, it's pretty close to what I would suggest too, but I have a few either um, comments or questions. Okay. Um, so again, how about if we do the same thing as we did with the building report that we we can take it off the agenda. We can revisit it at any point in time. We can bring it back up. Mm. You know what we're talking about when we say the the Chesboro option, okay? Okay. So we'll know what we're talking about um, for future reference when we get into... The nitty gritty. It, right, exactly. Um, Justin, your whole um, Google Workspace, is it possible to make a profile for the trustees so that we can al also like access, you know, something like this would be great to live there so we can just be like, oh, that document is here. It's not like version eight or whatever. We have a whole folder and, you know, I'm starting this process. Would it, do, um, oh, I guess my question will be this, because like this expense history report that I sent out today that has all of the data. Um, with the municipal accounts, the trustee accounts, I'm going to get, you know, the capital accounts and the friends expenses in here too, because I just want all of the money that goes into running the library on a yearly basis in one spot. And I shared it with each of you individually um, mm -hmm. with your email addresses. I mean, yeah. would you rather that or okay. would you rather like a trustee, 
Uh, I guess what I was hoping um, is that the eight of us or whatever could be under one. I would. I was thinking you could add all of our email addresses into one rather than us having to access another. Um, I'm not sure if that works under the open meeting laws. Um, that could be considered yeah. a meeting within a meeting. I don't know. I was thinking more like it was the repository to find that document that might have changed. Not necessarily that we're voting on it or anything, but I don't know. Well, as long as we've discussed it, it could go in there. But if we haven't discussed it, you can't. That would and I you can, not yeah, and, well and, with the open meeting laws. You know? Right. And the thing with Google Docs, one of the purposes is that you can make changes to it. We can't make changes without uh, a vote. Yeah. Y'all can't make changes to anything in the library's Google Docs without it being a violation of open meeting. Law. But you can read whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't feel like making these, like sharing the documents is, is a violation of anything. Okay. Because right now they're being shared over email and we can access them through our right. email. Yeah, it's public record already. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, but that would be very cool. Yeah, that would be fine. It just... <laughs> Again, easier I'm than searching thing. back through all the emails. What I wonder if that's a Rebecca question if we if there's a way to you know trustees will change that, that, that's literally right? what I'm writing down is ask Rebecca how <laughs> what is what Rebecca. is the what is the okay what is the sense of working off of a Google Doc if you can't make changes why not just read the emails what i was thinking is that it would like important documents you know certain things like this and maybe mary brainy's um proposal would all be in one spot so we all know go to this link and that's where we find the important okay. documents that we need all to right. read and reference that makes sense yeah and like i'm already moving all this stuff into folders this already exists in the um sfpl google drive um, I can share access um, to anyone with links, or you can add individuals. Um, but then if you don't have a Google account, then if you've shared it that way, then, I mean, you, you just have to be comfortable logging into Google and using it. Yeah. I mean, I'm comfortable with that, but I don't know if everybody is. Mm. It's easy to do once you know how, you know, I think we could just even make a little video and people would understand how to do it. <laughs> I give Deb her phone. Maybe Rebecca could do a little <laughs> tutorial for it. <laughs> Thanks for loaning me your computer. <laughs> it's, I mean, I have like a few different, just so you know, like, like I have a few different profiles. I'm here as Fontaine one at Mac.com, but my Gmail works differently. And as long as you're logged in that way, you can yeah. easily see these things. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So do we not want to, talk about our thoughts on the on the proposal yet that's up to you people um yeah well my big thing about not talking about it on um email was because that i i thought it would be um not in compliance with uh open meeting laws so that's all i agree i agree ellie I'm just I'm going to need some guidance soon um, because the building program is fresh and it's, you know, there were people watching the process and looking at the process. And, and there were two people who wanted to know what we were going to do with this before they committed to donating. Um, and they were talking about donating some large sums. So, I mean, if we're planning on waiting until 20. 33 or if we're planning on fundraising for a target of 8 million or 5 million or or a, soon I'm, I'm going to need a sense of what I can tell these people or they are going to lose interest uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. donate their money to somebody mm -hmm. else um, yeah well besides those two options we could also go to the town and go through their process mm -hmm. Which well, would everything would have to go through the town process regardless. Well, yes, yes. But not not applying for the grant, but still going for capital funds or debt exclusion or whatever it would be. 
Yeah, I'm not excited about waiting until whatever, 33 or something. Yeah, that's a me long neither. Time. This has been <laughs> going know, on like for 23 years. You know, it's, uh, it's a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, either we're going to have to shift gears into fundraising millions instead of thousands, or we, we this is going to have to go to, you know, the public construction, you know, funding process at some point, and we will have to do, you know, another campaign. Um, I mean, we will have to go to the town. We're going to pay for it. <laughs> we're going to pay for it one way or another. And we can't do it without the town. Also on what we want right. to do. And this is a one, I think the point too with, with the town is this is like kind of a one-time thing, right? I mean, the library has a budget every year, but it's not 13 million every year. And that's, I don't know. I don't want to belittle that, millions of dollars, but at the same time, it's a, small percentage of the school budget that they ask for every year. So I don't know. Well, I don't know the amount that the highway barn and the fire department are going for, but if it's a lot less than 13 million, I think people will think twice about 13 million for a library. I would highly doubt it's a lot less than 13 million. Yeah. And also if we, I mean, we already said, no for this year or 2024 for the um, applying for the grant and it's going to escalate you were just doing this with the 2023 money was it right. 13 million and if that's going to escalate over five percent a year or whatever you know that's something to think about and um it if we go with MBLC, which we've already said this many times, um, we'd have to move the library. You know, it wouldn't be- Well, we have to be willing to move the library. Right. And like the building report came out that the numbers that the state is looking at at this point won't work in the space that we have now well i don't know um i didn't make get that conclusion no we no we didn't get that conclusion me me and mary were working to pare it down so we could feasibly still fit it here because right. you know, look at the three four, but i thought the final thing that between you two was that it really wasn't going to work for where the library is at this point well, the Chesbro plan is 8,550 square feet, and uh, her plan is 13, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 5,000 more square feet. Um, so, I, I mean, like, I don't getting, know. I mean, oh, I see the eight, the eight feet, the 10 feet. Yeah, and calculating 10 feet out, the wall, back wall is 67 feet long. So, 10 times 67, and then multiply that by three if we're opening up all three floors. So, that would be a 2010 square foot edition um and then the 6540 that's already in the building you know that we would be turning the third floor into um would make a total of 8550 yeah and also in my or you know it's it's just my option that I'm offering and it's you know I I'm hoping other people will say that's you're full of beans or whatever. And, um, you know, it's, uh, but I, one of the things I don't want to do is hire an architect. Now that's then BLC hires architects or they don't do it, but um, then well, their grants. At some point we need, that. we need a professional. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking that, okay, can we ask um, the BFCC um what sort of, you know, I, I watch a lot of the, the home, um, you know, renovation type things on TV, which I'm sure some of you do too. You know? And, and I, um, I'm thinking, so where do those people go? They're designing these interior spaces or renovating these spaces, but I don't see any architects involved in it. I think they're these uh, engineers that have come in and said, oh, you need a big beam across your ceiling to uh, support this or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so 
can we just use an engineer? And we do, I, I know there's eight of us and how can eight people agree on anything when it's hard for just a family of two to get, agree on stuff. But um, can, uh, can we sort of simplify things, keep it simple and just do it that way and not get all involved with, oh, I need this kind of tile or whatever in, in the right. handicapped bath bathroom, you know, it's just keep it simple and um, do what we have to do to make it accessible. And um, that's all I was trying to say. And maybe I'm in and full of beans. And, and that's why I, I would like to talk to um, the BFCC just to see if they could answer some of the questions I had on my proposal. For my I think that's we, a great idea, we did Ellen. talk to the BFCC, but they wanted a plan. Yeah, yeah well, that's why the we'll that... give them a plan, but we have some questions. And the whole point of the BFCC being created was that there were so many building projects and um, like for the school. And I and I did talk a little bit about uh, to uh, what's his name um, in uh, who's left town when he was at Oktoberfest. What's his name? I can't remember. Mitch, um, Mitch Cohen. Cohen. Mitch Who? Cohen. Oh, Mitch. Yes, oh. Mitch Cohen. And um, that, yeah, you know, that's a good idea to have this BFCC because there's been these building projects and why do you have to have a whole new building um, design committee. Can I, can I just individual thing? Something. And that was the whole point of the BFCC, I think. Ellie, Ellie, what? can I just interject something? Sure. The plans for our house, which we're not even sure exactly when it was built, um, sometime between uh, 74 and 76, the municipal center was able to find a sketch on a napkin yeah. <laughs> in a file folder. Okay. Yeah. So that's how our house was built. <laughs> there was no BFCC like then. Mm -hmm. Well, so, building we have to get house some is kind a lot of a... different than building a municipal building. Okay. So I'm... I don't think we're not going to be able to cheap out and we're not going to be able to raise $8 million even for a cheap out plan. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to accept that. Yeah, I know. Can, can, can I, um... At some point, we're going to have to go through the town's building process, which I was trying to find our notes from our building subcommittee that what the process was with the RFPs and stuff, but I could not really? for the life of me find it. Hmm. But I'll try to find. Yeah. Um, can I make a suggestion? in the interest of time, that we table this discussion until the next meeting. I think it's really important. I think we're in a good spot. So can we, are we good with tabling it? Or do we want to continue with what, we, what we're doing? Justin Newell, do you, do, you, do you feel like you need answers for your potential Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't think any that we're going to arrive at tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. A lot. If we oh. were to. OK, here's another question. If we were to entertain a motion. All right. Somehow I'm going to remember what I'm saying. Somebody remember what I'm saying. Uh, to. Uh, how do I want to word it? Consider the Chesbro proposal. Um, with I don't know how to, how do I want to put it. I want with edits. with edits. Just put it on the agenda. Agenda for next month. That's what I'm saying. Can we table it? till next month for further yes. discussion. Yes, is that good? Mm -hmm. is, are we good with that? All right, because I think with it, there's a lot, there's a lot more to talk about here yep. uh, for sure. 
and we haven't even gotten to any of the other business. So let's let's table that. And hopefully we'll have some more members next yeah, month. Yeah, we're missing a few people, so yeah. Um I know our next meeting is the day after Christmas. I don't know how people feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will probably not be here. I don't think yeah, that's not gonna work for me either. But yeah, we'll probably be, be here in New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> but all right yeah don if you can come across that your notes on and i'll look again yeah, too, i know what my notes are there. but I'll, yeah but how good they are <laughs> they're right it, it would be cool to have a just a rough I'm, i know i have it somewhere the only thing i can really remember is the takeaway <laughs> from these meetings is bill and mike saying you have to just you know come up with a document saying what you want and put it out to bid you're never going to know what yeah. um we would need to put it out to bid yep for the plans and then the project would be a separate mm -hmm. and you know everything you do before that point you know you, you you make the best estimations you can with the data you have but i mean you don't know um because you know it depends on how the bids come in where it is you know what mm -hmm. is going on at the time um but the average is you know 750 to 1000 per square foot for library construction that's very good to know yeah. and don is, that's I didn't for anything mean, I didn't mean that's you had to for, find it now, that's for anything you're gonna pay that um so uh, the next thing on the agenda is other options under building options. What well, I'd like was, to do. Yeah, my um, the reason why I put that there was this was one option. Chesbro had an option. Right. And other ideas I was hoping would come forth. Yes. And, um, okay. So, okay. Yeah, I got it, Ellie. Chesbro got option it. and other options. Yes. Um, I got it, Ellie. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I would like to table that for the moment so Justin can go to other building issues and then I'd like to come back to other options. Okay? Go ahead, Justin. Yeah. Um, so I got quotes from Build Max in for fixing the bricks in the basement because um, when we moved the boiler, or when we removed the boiler and removed the oil tank, you know, we could see the bricks that were behind the oil tank and they needed fixing. They're like crumbling. Um, so I got a quote from them for fixing the crumbling bricks, painting the archive and fixing the bricks just on the south wall of the storage room where we're keeping all the extra shelves right now um, and some friends of the library auction overflow stuff. Um, that was $6,800. Um, and I also got them to pull out just doing the whole basement, um, you know, painting the basement, fixing all the bricks that need repointing in the archive, the storage room, the friends of the library room, the children's room, and the furnace room, um, and then painting it uh, so that it seals up the bricks so we stop having this crumbling issue. And they quoted that at 10400 Um I would like to fund the second option out of grants if everyone is amenable, um, rather than putting it on the capital process. And this is why um, it opens up a lot of, you know, like it, it's it right now is you know what is preventing us from doing anything else in the basement. Um, if we fix the walls, if we fix the basic structure around so that it's presentable, it's brighter. Um, we could start, you know, considering what to do down here. It would also force us to move everything out and consider how we're going to be putting it back. Um, and I think that would be a good first step towards making some of, you know, like the, the changes and the alterations in the basement, which would let us make more use of the space, which is, you know, um, it, whether we're going with the Chesbro plan or the Brainy Building program is something that we're going to be wanting to do ultimately anyway. So if we do this now and we get the $100,000 increase that will allow us a better building uh, repairs and maintenance budget um, starting July 1st, you know, it just opens up the ability to, you know, A, we're, we've got the space and now we have the funding to start doing things with it. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, we would have to vote on this to approve. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? <laughs> we want to make a motion for the 10,400 option. Okay. Do I hear a second? Seconded. Okay. So let's open it up to discussion. How much do we have in grants right now? Scroll up. Scroll up. Of course, this number <laughs> is a month old. Right. Because I pasted it <laughs> over all of my hard work that I did today. That's um, okay, Justin. <laughs> but we've got 59,702 in grants um, with 22 reserved for the capital campaign. I think um, on my minutes, it is because this is on multiple pages too. Um, and I was trying to make it more smaller for the minutes not to go on and on and on. So if you can look up, bring up just my minutes um, that we have already approved for for um, last month, it shows very succinctly. Yeah, so down here, it says there's 57,018 altogether. Is that what you just said? <laughs> So, that's regular donations. Uh, above it, uh, grants fifty nine seven zero two. I'm not sure where you read. No, see, I'm looking at the balance. If you looked at the balance down here, fifty seven zero one eight, which is the very. Yeah, but let's look at the L I G M A G grant. There's thirty three thousand four hundred eight dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's what we're working with. We're almost okay. halfway through the so year. So since it's been moved and seconded, we can't table it until the vote till next month. I mean, this is sort of a, a to spend the, that amount of money right now, we're already spending some money from regular donations for the front doors. And um, well, we would need so, to, to spend 6,000 at least, right? Yeah. For safety. Justin, sorry, do you have any recommendations of where the funding can come? Oh, I, I was going to suggest LIG MEG grant because there's a That's balance. That's what I was looking at. 408. Because you've got that. And what was what 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 else is that? That can be like a. That's kind of like what we fall back on when we need it, right? Yeah, it's unrestricted, so we can use it for whatever. Right. So the original amount was fifty nine seven oh two. So say sixty thirty thousand. Um we are oh, but these numbers <laughs> Again, yeah, there hasn't been anything. Yeah, there's not been any anything major. And right. we haven't got so either I'm of saying, our I think we have the money it. there. So, I mean, we're still looking at around twenty thousand dollars of income coming into this account before the end of the fiscal. Right, year. I think we have the money there. Yeah. And so, what's coming in this year? Twenty thousand, you said. That's what I'm guessing. They haven't certified okay. numbers yet, but that's what it was roughly last year. And what was your reason for not wanting to go to capital? Because you have to put it on the five-year plan, and I don't want to do this in five years. I want to do it now. <laughs> yeah. I think it sounds like a good idea. Any further discussion? So we're voting on the $10,000 approval, right? Yes. Approval. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll abstain. I'm abstaining. 
Okay. Okay. But that doesn't change, you know, I'm, it still can go through, but I'm not. Absolutely. Of course it can. All right. I believe everybody voted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're good. So now I would like to go back to other options on building options. I'm talking about uh, getting the downstairs area fixed as far as the uh, the brickwork and the painting and that. Um, and in the process, um, everything's going to be moved around to, you know, access everything. Um, my option would be to consider uh, in the not too distant future, near future, of moving all of the children's services to the lower level, uh, getting a circulation desk down there, and upon approval of the uh, uh, staffing for two people for circulation, um, that we could consider using that space and working towards that. I'll drop the <laughs> mic now. <laughs> Is that Loretta? I mean, that's kind of what I'm trying to make happen organically anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, Justin, I like your approach of trying to do what we can from the building program and from people's um, what people said in the surveys and try to do as much as we can in the meantime. Um, increasing the um, the staffing and the open hours, the more we we can provide better services to the town, I think we'll have more support as we try to renovate. We don't seem to lack support right now. Um, no, I think we have a lot of support. Mm. I don't think we should sell ourselves short as far as asking the town for things. I was at um, yeah. in gear transmission um, getting my oil change with my free oil change certificate I won in the Friends of the Library auction. <laughs> He's a select man and was talking about, well, what if you renovate, you know, like the attic and the first floor and then build on back so that you could just park cars underneath and like build a, you know, like parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the board of selectmen, the town administrator, um, I mean, people aren't, you know, they're receptive to the idea of doing things. And, and mm -hmm. that's nice that they're talking. So that's good. Yeah, I, I know you did that analysis, Justin, of how much, like how many square fit, feet we had compared to other libraries. I'm kind of curious, which we could probably find out in the news pretty quickly how much other library renovations cost because when you see millions, it's a scary number, but um, you know, I'm sure other towns have spent a lot more just for comparison. I don't know, even anecdotally, it might I think help. Grafton's was about 22 off the top okay. of my head. Um, that's the only other number one I can think of near recently that's been around here. Um, Upton, yeah. Upton, they did their thing with their combined library senior center um, outside and process. Oh, well, that would be interesting. I, I I like to hear the cost of stuff not being funded by the MBLC and that Upton um, Upton one sounds like they didn't get funding from the MBLC. They didn't, but it was still the same price range, um, 750, because their data goes into it, because that's not counting MBLC grant funded construction. That's all public library construction, um, because they okay. track that um, through error statistics and everything, like what you spend on capital, those are questions we have to answer. So the $750, mm -hmm. $750 to $1,000 per square foot figure is just whether you're doing the grant or not. You do know that the senior center is also running out of room. Yep. Yeah, that was occurred to me as they said senior center combined. 
And the post office lease is also about to run out. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> well, they could make that the state. senior center. Where would they the put the post tenant. office? There's a lot of moving parts, that's for sure. So I guess that would be my only comment about Ellie's plan is I think it's good for us to know what our priorities are and have some ideas of what we want, but we I think we also need to be flexible and realize that we're going to have to work with the town to get this done. That's my thought anyway. We will need some professionals to <laughs> tell us what is and what is not possible. Yeah, but an engineer probably could do that as opposed to an architect. Uh, I'm not sure if the town would allow that, but I would say no. I think they some, probably know, but... from the handicapped architectural board will have to approve something because that's how we got a waiver on the front doors before he had to go to the architectural board to or the accessible handicapped to get permission for that. Well, I can say that my son <laughs> is a commercial engineer. Mm -hmm. on uh, commercial construction sites and he does not have the authority <laughs> to develop plans. He has to go by what the architect says. So I'm not sure um, how we could do it. But Well, how do the property brothers do it? <laughs> That's a home, not a municipal building. Yeah. <laughs> have to go out to bid. <laughs> We can't construct without going out to bid. It's illegal. Yeah, I know that, but why can't you use a uh, um, uh, Danielle's son to do the planning? I mean, <laughs> if we go out to bid and he wins the contract, we could, but we have to go out to bid. <laughs> but that's why I wanted to ask the BFCC, do you actually need an architect or can you get a... a an engineer to do all that work, and what? Uh, how do you get um, the the guy in town that does plans? You know, draws up plans and things. There you was know, I, I came across some note that said something about like an independent architect. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly, but I I just really remember something about like if the architect helps us with the proposal. Then they can't bid later. So I right. exactly so, yeah, I, I, I remember hearing that. that too. Yeah. Yeah, and and um uh Salo is yeah, uh, you know, they do stuff like that. Yeah, but they'd probably want the whole project. Well, but I know I that um the across the street from us is the um the old fish and game place, um right. and it's now the Boy Scouts. And they were getting in trouble with the town because they didn't get enough permits. And so Salo was supposed to get all their permits in order, but then he got sick. And I, I think he's okay now. I'm not, I'm not sure, but this is all happening this year. You know, I'm thinking it's the same sort of thing of what we're working on. They've been working on at the, um, you know, troop, whatever it is. Um, 134 <laughs> and uh, to, to get that in shape for um, and then using it to generate money for their troop you know so uh, so here it is the architect needs to draft what's called a scope of work uh, and yes. it can't be more than one year old if we go to at least in 2020 that was the case but again, that precludes them bidding for the work. But what if, I don't know, I don't know if Aaron didn't see Aaron who Aaron is a he is an architect. Right. And I don't think he'd be interested in the yeah, whole he's, work. He's totally wrapped up. Well, in I mean, like this, this is all putting a whole bunch of carts before a <laughs> absolutely yeah. I agree, Justin. has to decide what you feel like is the best option for Douglas. Is it going to be something that's like the chess pro option is it going to be you know something bigger or is it some, going to be something smaller then we can put that in the hands of you know we, 
an architect and say, write out a scope so that we right. can put this out exactly. to bid and we You're can right, find Justin. out what it's going to cost. Let's bring it um, back to that's center. That's what the BSCC is going to tell us when we ask questions. Um, that's what Matt's going to tell us whenever we go out to ask questions. Um, right. everything we well, do why before, can't we ask questions of the town? Why That's the purpose of the BFCC. It's not them to ask questions of us. We're trying to find out how to approach all of this. That's well, all the purpose I of the BFCC with... is to make sure that we follow the rules and we don't screw up. Um, and most of our conversations seem to be around how do we skirt the rules and not screw up rather than <laughs> follow the rules and not screw up. Oh. Um, <laughs> so it, uh, it it's like we're not working together with them we're kind of working against them because you know like their goal right. is and it, us uh, through a public construction process we're uh, saying we I don't really want to do that because we feel like it's too expensive so let us try to like cobble together pieces in advance then give them to you and then it, it it's just it, we're, we're, we're reversing a process that yeah, i hear it I hear it. I'm not trying to, to spend eight million throw dollars. anything in it. You know, I'm I'm just wanted it to talk to the BFCC to see if they could answer the questions I had. That's all. Well, if we want to arrange a meeting with them, a joint meeting, then we can do that. They would probably want us to go and have questions, and you know, yeah, be That's prepared right. to have a productive conversation. And That's walk fine. away with something. They're not going to appreciate be appreciative if we show up and just and waste their time, which is a perception. By asking questions, happen. we're not wasting their time. We're asking questions. They're there. We're wasting questions. their time whenever we're asking questions that have a pointed direction of trying to, you know. I'm not trying really, to do anything illegal. You're trying to avoid hiring an artist. I'm not. Trying well, to skip that phase. Yes, that's why thing. I want to ask them the that question. Is, Skipping the line. That is skirting the rules. That is trying to. All right, get, I'm going to stop what it what we there, want chair. out there rather than what. Okay. You know, I'm going to bang. I'm going <laughs> to bang my gavel. This <laughs> chair. I'm going to stop this conversation. There's no sense in it. Um, we're not going to skirt the issues. We're going to carry on the way we should. Can we get back to the agenda so we can? Decide where we're headed from here. I don't have it in front of me. All right. So I propose another option of just getting ready to move children's services downstairs. Let's move on to grants, the capital campaign. Looks like we're we doing were at well. 14, now we're at 223. Perfect. All right. Other, nothing to report. The FI25 budget, which is important. Mm. Let's see if we can back up to the screen. Here it is. Um, <laughs> I worked today on getting the actual amounts that we've spent every fiscal year. Um, from our municipal accounts and our trustee accounts in one updatable spreadsheet that is shareable in Google Docs, which everyone has access to now, and I'll be updating. Um, I don't know if you'll get notifications every time I update it, but you know we'll be returning to this a lot. Okay. And okay. this has the actuals, it has the FY24 budget, and it has the FY25 proposal, um, which I wrote out the justifications for all the amounts in the email, um, which uh, I've been all over the place in email now. So now it is, Sorry. there's the packet, or is the budget. Okay. So whenever we did, uh, or whenever I did the um, looking out for trying to figure out what average level of funding for libraries in our population range is. It came up with a figure of uh, 408.865. So I made that my goal um, to be the bottom line of the budget request, because that is average as of two years ago. Um, so even now it's it's an under ask because the date is two years out of date. But you know, it's still it's a significant enough budget increase that I feel like it's I don't feel the need to go more. Um, it's driven by the personnel 
expansion, uh, which is over here. No one else is thinking about um, next year's uh, personnel budget yet. I talked to Matt today about what we could expect cost of living increases to be. He said anywhere between zero and 100 percent. So <laughs> I'm guessing five. It's never been more than five. So I think that is a safe. Yeah, is it down? Sounds like my husband. Um, <laughs> so if we add the staff according to um, the plan, which I sent out a few weeks ago, which um, extends Rebecca to full time, um, it adds two library assistants, which will work three hours every evening and every other Saturday. Um, that's the only real changes. It just moves Rebecca up. It adds those two positions. It allows us to be open from nine to eight, Monday through Thursday, um, and then have three deep coverage on Saturday. What this does is it gives us the staffing we need to run two circulation desks now. So it's mm -hmm. not a, an adjustment we'll have to make in the future. And until we're running two circulation desks, then these LAs I'm hoping can be focused on LA1, I'm hoping will become Gail's protege, you know, she, LA1, I'm hoping will learn all the ins and outs of, you know, like all the things Gail does with Comcat and circulation stuff. And the LA2, I'm hoping to hire someone who has a rapport with teens who can work with Deb to establish some evening teen things going on at the library. Um, and also it just opens up more nights. Not everything has to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays anymore. We could do things yeah. on Mondays and Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, which double our programming capacity. So that's the goal of the staffing plan. Um, and that comes out to roughly a, a budget of 271,486. Um, roughly? That, well, that is straight up, you know, like okay. with a no, that's right. 05 COLA <laughs> and assuming 52 weeks in the fiscal year. So like there's holidays, which part-timers don't get paid for. There's <laughs> like, Sometimes the fiscal year will have like one less Saturday and an extra Thursday. I don't want to go that deep. Um, I would rather just turn back an extra thousand dollars to the town at the end of the year to go to free cash than try to calculate it that granularly. Um, and Matt always allocates more than I predict we're going to need anyway, mm -hmm. um, because I don't understand how he does his math. <laughs> so, but I'm thinking that the worst case scenario is that this will hit our personnel line item for 214, or I mean, I'm sorry, 271, <clears throat> 487. And everything else is kind of built around that number. Um, <laughs> and then the total number, making is circulation. Red, I'm sorry? Is the red where we are now? Yeah, the red is our current budget. And then okay. the FY25 proposal comes after that. Okay. So I'm proposing bumping up our circulating materials to 78,000 from 60 because we have to, because we have to spend 19% of our budget on circulating materials that mm -hmm. the MBLC qualifies as such. And that's 19% of 408. Um, custodial supplies and dues, custodial supplies are increased to a thousand because we've been buying more products post COVID. And we're going to be open two more nights. I think that's a fair mm -hmm. increase. Oh, yeah. Dues and memberships. I would like to add Rebecca to our institutional um, plan. So she's also an MLA member and get her um, access to the American Archives Association because that actually comes with perks like access to some newspaper databases and things that we don't have. Mm -hmm. So adding that, it comes up to 950. Why not add another five bucks to make it an even grant? Um, Electricity, I'm just budgeting the same thing we budgeted this year because we've never come close to it. Um, actual for FY23 was $4,759. Um, we're looking at not even hitting that this year, being open initial two evenings. I think that gives us a safe padding. Licenses and subscriptions is a brand new line item. Um, it will basically replace what we're doing right now by funding cost per search with grants. Right now, we're paying $600 a month out of grants to augment the cost per search because the MBLC doesn't qualify those as circulating materials anymore. If we shift that to operations here, um, then we can do, I put it in the narrative. Where's the narrative? <laughs> 500 a month for books and 700 a month for audiobooks. 
I'm following you so far. Non-energy utilities is the water bill. We could probably expect it to go up, but not a lot. Um, office supplies, I bumped to 2000 because I would like to get some better supplies. Like we, Deb spends a lot of time sharpening pencils because we've got like, you know, a 20 year old pencil sharpener. Uh, <laughs> a, a paper guillotine. Come on, a pencil sharpener, Justin. I am. I heard. $1,000. Justin. Wow. Justin well, the I paper heard. thing, I do want a good paper cutter. That I was going to say, oh, I'm not what? sure we can approve a really good paper cutter for you. <laughs> I have a really good I'll paper, paper cutter. cutter. I have I'm not sure what you one. define as a really good paper cutter. I have one. I'll give it to the library, but it's big. <laughs> it's three <laughs> feet by three feet, I think. Yeah, about that. Right yard. now we're using like an old swing line that I've sharpened the blade on quite a few times. You can only get like up to, you know, eight sheets at a time before it starts to tear instead of cut. And so like, I've taking, used taking those all my life. Things, Takes forever. What's wrong with that? Um, I've used them all my life. Well, I have one. I'll bring it down to the library. <laughs> cool. and try it out. Except okay, you have Justin, to put an addition on. on the library to use it. Yeah, That's exactly. Move <laughs> <laughs> So, other property related expenses. Um, I've upped to fifteen hundred. Oh, lost Jeff. I keep doing that. Where'd that go? No. Oh. Because uh -oh. it's a safe bet. Looking at past data. Other services um, is basically programming. Um, Deb Hudgens, uh, we have to pick up, you know, whenever the NBLPC does not fund her, we fund her in their off seasons mm -hmm. or the YMCA CP. Um, we, we, we had a bump in FY21 for, for this because we tried to do some virtual programs and it was terrible. Yeah. Um, but 800 <laughs> bucks hard. gives us mm -hmm. what we need to cover Deb and then just do one more program, a nice one throughout the year. Um, on top of what the friends and the cultural council funds, if something nice pops up. Other supplies I've upped to 3000 um, because it seems to be more fair and in line with what we use. And if our circulation budget is going up, we're going to need more, right. you know, for plastic and glue and stuff. Postage, I'm keeping it 40 bucks because um, I'm expecting we will be sending more reliably bills and things because I've got a procedure for that now. Um, mm -hmm. it will I think be done it's good really. just to keep it in the in the line, keep it there in the line. Um, CWMR's bill seven seven sixty four. We've already got that, so that's what our assessment is for next year. That's not a guess. Um, I'm going to skip repairs and maintenance. Replacement equipment is it two thousand one hundred and fifty? This is a new line item, but you know. Switches, routers, computers. A lot of times we need to replace things like that. It doesn't have to come out of grants. It could come out of our operational budget. Yeah. Um, the telephone is at 260. I don't know why we stopped getting billed for our fax line in FY21, but <laughs> I'm not motivated to solve that problem. Um, <laughs> And finally, everything else that's left to get us up to the average level of funding of 408, 865, I want to put in repairs and maintenance, or repairs and maintenance, um, because we need it. Um, right. That lets us do things, um, you know, like re replacing light bulbs, replacing blinds. You know, we've got window panes all over the place that are cracked, which we can just start knocking out. Um, and if we just roll this into the uh, operational budget and have, you know, roughly this amount to spend on, um, you know, repairs and maintenance in that first year after we do our staffing increase, then, you know, after the first year, if it seems like our staff is ready to tackle Fridays on their own, an open Friday evening hours, that's enough mm, to like make that. that or we can keep it in replacement equipment or in a keep we can keep it in repairs and maintenance until we are happy with you know how the building is because i think you know when i started in 2015 there was a pretty we were always trying to not ask for money from the town we were trying to keep our budget in mar every single year at that 2.5 percent increase and move everything else we could to grants. 
And it kind of skewed what we think of as capital expenses versus what we think of as just straight up regular repairs and maintenance. Um, and rather than, you know, having to ask you guys to approve grant money whenever we have, you know, like a light ballast that goes out or a window pane that is cracked, as happened this evening, um, or shelves that fall down, or, you know, paint that has peeled away and needs replaced, we just do it with the repairs and maintenance budget that the town can give yeah. us. Right. Yep. I mean, that seems reasonable. Like, there's, it's an old building. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that's my budget proposal. All right. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept Justin's budget proposal as written. Oh, so, should um, we wait second? till it's? <laughs> Do I hear a second? One last thing I wanted to mention that I forgot. Um, if the total personnel line item is, we get closer to the end of the budget process. Mm -hmm. If Matt's numbers come back and it turns out there's only like a 1.5% COLA instead of a 5% COLA, there's going to be a lot of extra money there that I do want to roll back into operations as even more repairs and maintenance. Because um, mm -hmm. I want us to get to this 408-865 number. All right. So, Does that make so sense? We, have, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. All right, so for discussion on Justin's proposed FY20 budget. It's dropping on me. Yes, I have about four points. Ready? Yep. yep. Okay, the opening at nine o'clock in the morning. Can you keep track of that and see if it if anybody comes at nine o'clock and mm -hmm. if they don't, then maybe we could change that and only make it nine o'clock in the morning if people come? Yeah, we can revert. If well, could, what time I can show you exactly how I can keep track of that because Well, the staff is gonna be there so they'll know if anybody comes or not. The door oh, we can do that. But what time does your staff come in? You open at 10 now. Do they come in at 10 or do they come in at? They come in at 10 five? right now. Yeah. So that, I mean, your staff could get ready, pull all the holds and all that other stuff at nine and um, and then go and sit at the desk and um, or do whatever they do, story hours at 10. Don't, you could have your staff coming in earlier to... Uh, yeah, well, that's not what I'm saying. I, if it's going to be open at nine, I think it should be open to the public. What's the point? The staff have downtime during the day. They can do that. My next point is, I think the cutoff point for paying full benefits and everything is 19 hours. So if you take um, Rebecca from 19 hours to 33, I understood that they didn't get benefits if they were 19 because the Town employees are always having a problem about raising somebody up to where they get benefits. Yeah, Rebecca would get um, benefits if this goes. Which she does not get now. Exactly. Also, I I I don't know if we it, would she be raised to an archive. I'd rather her extra hours be used being at the desk and covering things like that than all those extra hours being archive work. It doesn't seem like our size town needs that much extra. Now, her job title work. is archivist, but she will be on the desk. Yeah, I'd like to her, her to fill in any time when you need her. Um, well, the she'll other also thing have is, like scheduled hours on the desk because in the proposed staff schedule, if you look, there's um each individual like on Monday over here. You see, there's desk one that is designed intended to be you know who's covering the main circulation desk at that time desk yeah, two nice. would be whoever's covering the children's desk downstairs which you know doesn't exist yet but it would well and that's pie order. in the sky right now we, we don't need to worry about that right now no no i'm just saying like it's it's baked in 
So like Rebecca is scheduled to be on the CERC desk from nine to noon on Mondays and on the children's desk from nine to one on Tuesdays. Um, and her project times will be when she's down in this project tab or into the floater tab if she's not needed because that's just coverage. Oh, I didn't okay. know you were having two separate circulation desks. I thought it was just you were staffing the main desk with two people all the time. I didn't realize well, that. Well, he's looking to the future when we have to, you're not going to make two circulation desks at the moment. Nope. All right, here's the other slightly esoteric deal. Um, when the budget goes up to whatever it is now, and it goes up to 400000 uh, and we have to spend 19% of that on reading material, then we will have to spend a lot more on books than we do now, which means the odd unintended consequence is we will have to be weeding out tons more books from what we have because we won't have room for all the more books we have to buy. And let well, you get it all for all the books because we can still buy um, one copy, one use and metered access digital content um, with, and that counts as circulating materials. Um, it's just cost per circ titles don't. So not all of that $78,000 is going to be new books. Cause you are right. That would okay. flip. <laughs> um, Betty, did you finish what you're saying? Because I wanted to add something to it. Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say from working with Rebecca on different projects, what she brings is so valuable to the town as a whole. And it's not just because I like her. <laughs> I just think, <laughs> you know, having this preservation is so important. And the way she organizes things makes it like someone could find this in a hundred years. The systems are just really, really good. Um, but, and maybe this is throwing a confusing wrench into it, but I just want to ask the question because it, it's sort of like even more, like what she's doing is more than just the library. It's like for the whole town in a way. So is there any way to like break up her salary? Probably not, but I'm going to ask the question, like break it up. So it's partly just the municipal budget and partly the libraries. I've dangled that carrot in front of Matt for three years. Um, oh, okay. and, you know, the town clerk has said they need help. Um, the town building officials have said they need help over there. Um, but nothing keeps coming of it. So, I mean, okay. if they're so not going to strike while the iron is hot, then, you know. Yeah. And we don't want to like potentially lose her or something like that. So I think, I think explaining that, while what she's doing does not just benefit the library, it benefits the whole town. That's why we need more. The whole town needs to contribute a little bit more to the library for the good of the whole town. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's important to um, for just one person to be and the archivist for the town would be Rebecca, but under the um, thumb of, of Justin. You know, I th and I think that I, I see nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> because, oh my God, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I, I think um, that you want a consistent system uh, mm -hmm. for the whole town and not just for uh, each individual, the town clerk saying, oh, this is how I'm going to classify my stuff. And, and the building inspector saying, this is how I'm going to um, do my stuff, you know, and I, that's what's so important about having um, one person um, being in uh, the archivist for the whole town, I think. All right. So the, the back. other libraries you compared to, did they have archivists? Most don't. The ones you because most libraries aren't able to get, you know, an archivist. Well, most libraries, Rebecca makes a library assistant salary. Um, we do not pay her at the level of a professional archivist. And even, you know, after reclassifying her as an archivist, I mean, $22.68 an hour. Um, 
most Simmons trained archivists are just not going to work for that, um, which is why most small public libraries don't have archivists. Um, so is it unique? Yes, but I think that's a good thing. Yes, I have to say. Apparently a good bargain. <laughs> yes, I have worked. I've met with Rebecca. I've on different levels as and um, she's a huge asset to the library. She really is. Mm -hmm. She's also driving the procedure manual in Google in a great integration. <laughs> so yeah. She's. Um, So Keeping I would like to bring line. the discussion. Trying to get the house in order. <laughs> yep. I would like to bring the discussion back to um, the approval of uh, Justin's proposed budget for FY25. Well, we, did Betty answer or ask all her questions? I'm not sure. Yes. I think she did. did I answer all your questions? No, ask. Yes. Okay. Can you ask them? Okay. Yes. So we would be approving this budget for you to present to uh, Matt and, Matt the, and the Board of Selectmen. EOS and whoever. Um, is there any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of, a propo of approving Justin's proposed FY25 budget, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right. Unanimous. We'll throw that out and see what happens. Woo That's exciting. <laughs> it, it, it's a big increase. It will yeah. change everything. Yeah. <laughs> we do stuff. And it's kind of stressful, yeah. but it, it's a good stressful. Yep. So when do you need to do you need to go before the town with this too? No. Um, well, this is just what I will present whenever we're going into the budgetary process. Okay. Um, Sometime you know, in January, right away I would saying, say. This is what the trustees have approved for personnel next year. So, you know, put this in your spreadsheet and yeah, get to Con cranking. And then the rest <laughs> of like the operational piece is um, just presented to FinCom, um, Matt, the selectmen. But I don't think there's going to be any resistance from conversations I've had. Um mm -hmm. FinCom will probably ask questions, but we've talked with the selectmen, you know, I've, I've chatted with Matt and, you know, everyone recognizes that it's a reasonable request. I mean, it's still below average. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yep. That's cool. I love it. Okay. Woo. Ready to move on? Sure. I'm ready to get that money. <laughs> I have nothing on the screen right now. Right. Hmm? LRP updates um, is the next thing. Uh, we're, we're working on the procedure manual um, and all the things involved with that and updating how we're, we're doing our stuff. Um, the next steps in the long range plan, the, or the, the action plan for this fiscal year are establishing a monthly film club and reestablishing the weekly move afternoon movie night for teens. Um, so we will try to tackle that. And um, we actually met our fundraising goal. Our LRP, you know, our long range plan said we wanted to have, you know, at least 200,000 by the end of the fiscal year. And we do. So, yay, we can check that. Um, mm -hmm. Next month, I'll have a draft for FY25's action plan. It's probably going to be driven mostly by the budget um, and the, you know, get to average campaign of, you know, like just trying to get, you know, make all these things happen with the budget we have, um, which will kind of be a pretty intense long range or pretty intense action plan in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But I will have that drafted out by the next meeting um, with, you know, like the neat, you know, approval did we pass or did we fail after one year evaluation period and all that? Okay. Great. Moving on to friends. Um, okay. Friends okay. is, um, it's, I probably won't do it till January, but um, maybe I will do it sooner than later. And it's submitting reports to the secretary of state, the attorney general, state 
Attorney General and the IRS. The other in Friends is um, I will be buying two wreaths for the front door. <laughs> um, I have a, a lifetime supply of um, bows because Adam gave me all the ones that he's been saving and not throwing away. So I thought that was very nice of him <laughs> from the town. And um, so I have a, a big pile. I have, I'll, I'll put a bow on them and I'm picking those up on um, the first Saturdays at this coming weekend, I guess, um, from uh, Troop 134. They're selling them to me at cost and as opposed to um, more expensive ones. And um, and that I'll pick up on, uh, the friends will pick up on Saturday and bring it down to the library. That's it. Nice. Thank you. We lost our other. Oh, <laughs> Betty, your son had to come in on Saturday. He came in on Saturday, and nobody knew what he was doing there. I wasn't here. Um, I know he, <laughs> they gave him a lot of trouble. If, if if you give me his address, I will take him the bloody stamp book because, like, he, I can't get him to return my calls or emails. He shows up. He came in on Saturday. I know, and the, I wasn't here because he. I, I sent him an email asking, you know, like, can we make an appointment to pick this up, or can I bring it to you if you give me your address? And instead of answering me, he just came. Um, so, like, you know, like the, the stamp book is in a drawer in my desk because I was waiting to hear back from him. Um, so Rebecca just she had no idea where it was. Um, after him, <laughs> I've got one more, and then we'll be done with the auction. But if you just, just email me his address and let me take it to him, please. <laughs> you have to just save it until I come in. Now, hopefully, I'll come in in a couple of weeks or something. Or I, I'm happy to do that. I just want to get it to him somehow, and I hate for him to have to come to the library again because mm. the first time that it hadn't arrived from the donor yet, and then the second time, I don't remember what happened, and then the third time what was was this Saturday. It just. Uh, I mean, I'm happy you to take it have, out to him. We deliver books every just, Thursday, so we're driving all over just town. Have, just have Gail. He doesn't live in town. Just have Gail drop it at my house on Thursday. Okay. That sounds like a <laughs> solid plan. Thank you, Betty. <laughs> Okay, are we good? Mm -hmm. All right, under new business. Uh, timing for closure requests. Yeah, I think I put this on it. It just, um, could we have a little more head time to um, make decisions like that? Because actually the trustees should be approving it. You know, I have no problems with you closing early the day before Thanksgiving, but it would have been nice to have heard about it in um, October instead of three days before the the holiday, you know, so. It, it was a super spur of the moment decision and I apologize. We had patrons asking us, what time are y'all gonna close on Wednesday before Thanksgiving? We're like, we're not planning on it. They're like, well, why not? Like, I don't know. So like, I just looked at Gail and looked at, Deb was already on vacation and I was like, "Are is everyone willing to take time? Um, and they said, yes, it was okay. And then yeah, I but technically it should be the trustees is, that say yes to mm -hmm. it, you know, and we have to, so we have to know it uh, in October. You have to bring it up then. So if you plan on doing it again next year, do it in October so that we have a chance to um, uh, vote on it, to make it um, um, hunky dory. Oh my. Uh. Can't we just give him permission to close when he thinks fit? He's I, a high level manager, for goodness sake. Well, I, it's, I think the trustees have to, you know, do stuff like that. Uh, Ellie, I'm going to yeah. say, I'm going to agree with Betty. And I don't want to micromanage Justin and his staff. It's not micromanaging it. It's, the trustees. Okay, does anyone want library. to bring forward a motion for uh, trustee approval for early closures? Well, obviously, I'm losing, so I'll. 
I, I, from my experience with the schools, the colleges, they, the trustees do make the decisions on the calendar, but we're not talking about like, it's like snow closures and things like that. It's more like, you know, we're all, we'll always, you know, be closed the day after Thanksgiving or whatever that is. And then it, you know, kind of rolls over each year. Um, and you have to watch out because there is a calendar for closure or the vacation times that the town gives. And then if all of a sudden, except that they're, they're taking their own time off, they're not being paid by the town for two hours early closing, you know, so it's, it's, it's tricky there. I mean, there is a, a calendar of events that the town pays for closure of. And so that's yeah, all, yeah, I'm not all sure. the federal and state holidays. Sometimes MAP will close, you know, like, and like, like the barbecue thing. Like, you know, he said, you know, like we're closing all the departments for this employee barbecue. Everyone has to be a town hall. Um, <laughs> next year, I will keep a closer eye on any holiday eves. And if it looks like we're going to close early for a holiday, I, I, I will, I will try to have it out, you know, in advance for Ellie, as well as for our patrons who would appreciate more advanced notice. Thank you. Okay, are we good? Do we need a vote on this? Are we, can we move forward? Move forward. All right. Does that um, mean adjourned? Wait, no, there's more. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, fundraising effort to the community. I did put up something for a I didn't realize today was Giving Tuesday, but I did post something on yeah. Dynamic Douglas for considering donating uh, to the Friends of the Public Library for a year-end donation. Yeah. Thank you. That was very nice. I, I like that. I will, uh, and Justin, you can just take that and put it in your next uh, newsletter, okay? Okay, do I'll put it up again every week or so, so. So under other new business, anything? <clears throat> our, next, our next meeting is dis dis uh, <laughs> scheduled for, I'm looking at it like December 26th, okay. Mm -hmm. Bye bye right. book clubs meeting. All righty. So um, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Well, wait a minute. Are we going to meet on the? Yeah, I thought we were because going to a, about two or three of you said you could come. So I, I well, won't be here. Should... And um, said... so should we knock that out and not have it on December twenty sixth, or just skip? I agree. December? Totally agree. Should Can we, we skip go December? Week? Is that okay with with everything that you have to get into the town and stuff like that, Justin? Um, it should be. I mean, the budgetary process doesn't typically. I know it's June thirtieth. Yeah. We're like ahead of the curve on that this year. Right. Absolutely. So <laughs> should we uh, just what's uh, skip it? next? Where are we? January twenty third. Mm hmm. So good. will someone alert the rest of the group? Yeah. So actually, we're not going to meet. Um, I don't think there's anything we really need to discuss within the next four weeks, do you think? I think we're good. Okay. All right. I'm good. If something okay. pops up, I will, I'll, I'll be in touch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just notify everybody else today or soon, not wait until the minutes go out. Yep. <laughs> Thank I mean, you, I've, Patty. I've got to send out an updated packet anyway because <laughs> finance report. <laughs> I really hope I can find it somewhere. I don't want to have to recreate it from scratch. Well, don't mm. worry about it. <laughs> We're good. All right. I declare this uh, meeting adjourned. Okay. Stop.